A very controversial set of works that Penrose did includes his work on making sense of consciousness. When Penrose was in Cambridge, he took lectures on mathematical logic by the mathematician Stroughton Steen. In these lectures, he learned about Cordell's incompleteness theorem and Turing machines. The other course was a course by a man called Steen who talked on mathematical logic and he explained things like Gödel's theorem and Turing machines, Turing machines being the mathematical notion upon which modern computers are based. In simple terms, Cordell's incompleteness theorem says that if you have any mathematical system which is self-consistent, then you will always have some true statements which you cannot prove using that system. On the other hand, Turing machine is just a fancy name for a computer and there is a very important problem regarding Turing machines. The problem asks you to find an algorithm to tell if a given computer program will continue to run forever or not. It is called the halting problem because when the program stops to run, we say that the program has halted. In 1936, British mathematician Alan Turing showed that the halting problem cannot be solved. In other words, you cannot find an algorithm that will tell you if a program will halt or not for all possible programs. Penrose said in an interview that when he was taking this course, he came to the conclusion that consciousness is not just computation. Instead, something non-computational is going on to produce consciousness. To back up his claim, he provides an example of a system that is hooked up to a Turing machine. This system has two states which are on or off. If the Turing machine halts, the system is in the off state, otherwise it is in the on state. Since we cannot predict halting, the state of the system cannot be determined by an algorithm, but it is still deterministic because it is determined by the Turing machine. This is an example of a system which is deterministic but not algorithmic. One candidate for a non-computational process is the collapse of the wave function. Penrose thinks that wave function might have something to do with the brain as well. A person who agreed and collaborated with Penrose in this line of work is philosopher John Lucas, and they came up with Penrose Lucas argument, where they argued against the possibility that something like a human brain can be achieved using a big enough computer. In 1989, Penrose wrote about this matter in his book The Emperor's New Mind, and it received wide and fierce criticism. The number of critical papers on it is just too much for me to show here. Here is a list of papers that criticize the approach of using Gordel's theorem in the way Penrose uses it. Marvin Minsky, who was a computer scientist at MIT when writing about the quest for scientific explanation wrote that one can carry that quest too far by only seeking new basic principles instead of attacking the real detail. This is what I see in Penrose's quest for a new basic principle of physics that will account for consciousness. Later, Penrose started to collaborate with the anesthesiologist Stuart Hameroff and together they developed the idea that consciousness may be caused due to quantum mechanical effects in special structures in the cells called microtubules. The size of these microtubules is of the order of tens of micrometers. They call this model Orchestrated Objective Reduction or ORC-OR. Penrose wrote about this idea and addressed the previous criticisms in his 1994 book titled Shadows of the Mind. Unsurprisingly, this book also received a lot of fierce criticism. Solomon Pfefferman, who was a mathematician at Stanford, said, I am personally convinced of the extreme implausibility of a computational model of the mind. Penrose's Godelian argument does nothing for me to personally bolster that point of view. Moreover, the famous philosopher Hilary Putnam wrote, he describes the hypothetical case of a program that still stimulates our mathematical capacity and is assumed to be simple enough for us to understand it thoroughly. There is an obvious lacuna. The possibility of a program we could write down but not succeed in understanding is overlooked. This is the mathematical fallacy on which the whole book rests. However, the strongest criticism was yet to come. In 1999, physicist Max Tegmark wrote this paper where he showed that the neuron firing that happens in the microtubules is at least 10 billion times too slow for quantum mechanical effects to show up, and therefore, cognition should be thought of as classical processes. This paper was cited by a lot of critics of Penrose and Hameroff. Hammer Hameroff's group retaliated on this paper by saying that Tegmark's paper didn't address the ORCOR model but some other model. Moreover, they claimed that Tegmark's results are in contradiction with known results. They were able to reduce the factor of 10 billion, but still all problems were not solved. To resolve these problems, they assumed that the neurons can have multiple states, which are called gel states and liquid states. Using these states, they were able to eliminate the factor of 10 billion that was calculated by Tegmark. Some evidence for the Penrose Hameroff 
proposal came in 2014 when Anirban Bandhupadhyay and his group in Japan discovered features of quantum mechanical vibrations in microtubules. Following this discovery, Penrose and Hemerov wrote a review of the Orr-Coar theory where they used the Bandhupadhyay's discovery to argue in favor of their model.